Over the years, I've tried a lot of EQs and some of them is still in my sessions up until this day. Some of them I've used a long time whilst others I have just started using. And in this video, I'll break down my top five EQs that I use in almost every mixing session. So let's go. Links to all the EQs that I mentioned in this video is linked down below in the description. And if you're interested in mixing in general, download my free mixing guide. Now the first EQ that I want to talk about is the CQ from Sound Toys. The CQ is based on a vintage hardware EQ from the 60s called the Siemens W295B. It packs a lot of character, some saturation, and it's a colorful EQ. It has three bands, a low shelf, a high shelf, and in the middle, a bell curve band with a selectable frequency knob. It also features a drive knob, which you can increase or decrease in case you want more or less character. There's no makeup knob here, so you have to do, do that in another plugin. I like to use this on bass, I like to use it on vocals, I like to use it on individual instruments. It really depends on the situation, but whenever I want something simple, if I want some low-end enhanced, for example, I can use this with good results almost every time. Now here's a couple of examples where I use the CQ EQ. And do you have a favorite go-to EQ? Let me know in the comments. The second EQ I want to show you is the SSL E channel strip and the SSL J channel strip. There are some subtle differences between these EQs, but in a mixing situation, I just grab the one that is closest to me. So if I've already used the J-channel strip, I just load up that one. I'm not that picky. I think they are quite similar, even though they are a bit different, but in the context of a whole mix, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. So what is really making a difference to me at least is speed and efficiency. So I just load up this one and this is typically for adjusting something in the mid bands. That's what I use them for mainly. When I want low or high ends, I use other EQs, but for the mid bands, I think this is fantastic. It can get really surgical and you still have that old school feeling of tweaking a knob without looking at a graph or something. Another advantage of these SSL EQs is that they are featured in a channel strip. So whenever I want some compression, either before or after the EQ, I can just do that. And on the off chance, whenever I use the high or the low bands, it's a switchable bell or shelf button, which is really practical. Now, here are some examples where I use the SSL J channel. Let's go. Feminist, legitimate, the whole shit. No blade is starter, so by ettling them broke, bitch broke. And I beat it, it's why they did some coke snip. Sucked over, so by the mule for my upload. This can leak some feminist, the legitimate, the whole shit. No blade is starter, so by ettling them broke, bitch broke. And I beat it, it's why they did some coke snip. If you liked this video so far, hit the like button, maybe hit the subscribe and maybe <laughs> hit the bell. The next EQ I want to show you is the Mog 4 from Plugin Alliance. 
This EQ is also based on original hardware. It's like this one. And it's legendary for using in mastering situations and also on vocals. The most astonishing feature of this EQ is the air band. It goes all the way up to 40 kilohertz. And that's like, that's 20 kilohertz above human hearing abilities. And when you just tweak way up there there's some magic happening i use it for that feature on vocals where i want some shine where i want some air going on some more some fizz. another great feature about this is that there are set bands except the air band of course you have the sub band which you can tweak the volume on you have 40 hertz 160 hertz 650 hertz 2.5 kilohertz and that's a shelf all the others are bell curves. Even the sub band is a set bell curve. Now let me show you a couple of examples where I use the Mog 4 EQ. EQ number four, and this is a beast of an EQ. The digital V3. This plugin is from Plugin Alliance. It's overwhelming, but when you get used to it, it gets less intimidating. It sort of resembles the Manly Massive Passive. It's sort of the same. You have the left and the right channel. And what I like about this EQ is that you can use it in the stereo mode and you can tweak both channels a bit differently, causing some more stereo interesting stuff going on. And you can also use it in mid side mode. So there are really a lot of options here. There are two analyzer windows at the bottom, which can help you visualize what's going on with the EQ without helping you too much. Like a frequency spectrum analyzer, it, it doesn't help you that much. So you, you really have to rely on your ears still. And um, you got the mono maker, which I really like, where you just make everything mono beyond a certain threshold in the frequency spectrum. It even features a dynamic EQ section. So you can, for example, make EQ cuts less invasive. And I typically use this in mixing situations on buses. And what I use the most is the mono maker and the ability to tweak differently on each channel. I also use the high bands. I like those on this EQ. And I also like to experiment with the low shelf settings. I've had it for half a year now, but I haven't used it as much as I would like to. So I'm looking forward to use it more in the future. Now, here's a couple of examples where I use this EQ. And if you like this video so far, hit the like button, hit the subscribe and hit the bell curve filter button. The fifth and final EQ I'm going to show you is the Pro Q3. This EQ is from FabFilter and if you haven't tried it yet, I seriously suggest that you tried it. If you're only going to buy one EQ this year, this is your best bet. This EQ can cater to all your EQ needs, except maybe the insertion of vibe and saturation and color. This is a really clean EQ for clean up duties first and foremost but in my opinion that's what you really need especially as a beginner when you first start mixing and you're seriously into this it's a costly eq but it gives you so much value that you won't think about it in the long run it features a dynamic mode which i like really much you can load up 
a ton of different bands. You can select stereo left or right, mid or side. There are selectable filter curves and it's really fast to use. It's really intuitive. It also features makeup gain, oversampling and frequency spectrum analyzer and it's really good. There are tons of other features in this EQ and in the future I'll make a video where I break down everything that you need to know about this EQ. Now let me know in the comments below which of these EQs do you like the most and do you have a favorite EQ? Let me know. And if you've enjoyed this video, check out any of these two videos right here. They're sort of in the same valley and don't forget to download my mixing guide. The link is in the description. And if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope I see you in the next video. Peace. Are you